and Gemma, reporting for the BBC News School Report at the Mary Erskine School. We are here with Shauna Mullen, a former pupil and beach volleyball Olympian, interviewing her on the impact of Scottish independence on sport. Firstly, how were you introduced into sport? Um, when I was younger, I was born in South Africa. We had a very, um, very active lifestyle with the weather and being outside all the time. Um, I think it helped that my dad was very competitive and he liked, he loved sport, so he would always take me down to the park, we'd be in the pool, we would always doing stuff. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. In terms of competing and like and being an Olympic player, how did it feel to be part of the Great British team? It was amazing. Um, I think before we were going in, we did a lot of training and. Um, a lot of hard work and then didn't really realise how, how much fun we'd actually have being part of Team GB and, and a lot of work for some of us with the British Olympic Association to say be prepared to be part of a big team and to support other people. For beach volleyball players, there's only two of us on the team when we're travelling around the world, there's us two and a coach, so it doesn't really feel like a lot of people around you, um, but it was amazing. Um, we played our first game against Canada and we walked into the, the cafeteria after our game um, and all the British players like were clapping and they had TVs on and we didn't realise that they were all in the cafeteria actually watching the game like cheering for us. So it was a very weird sensation to have so many people there to support you but when you look back on it it really was a nice thing to have so much support. And um, obviously the Olympics require a lot of training and the Olympics can take place over the world, country and abroad. And um, where did the majority of your training take place? Oh um, we went we travel a lot and um, it was it's quite disappointing for beach volleyball because we didn't have any indoor facilities in the UK. So the only thing we had were two beach courts outside um, at the University of Bath. So when the weather wasn't like this, there's no way we could train outside, although we did try one year. Um, so our season runs from April to September, so that's when we're competing, um, and there's 16 events on the World Tour. Between October and April, we have to do our pre-season training. So um, we usually start off between October and April, oh, October and Christmas. We would go between the UK and Tenerife, so do camps in Tenerife, then come home, do physical work, and then go back around to Japan. Um, in uh, pretty much on New Year's Eve, we would get on a plane and head down to New Zealand, um, where we'd spend seven or eight weeks just training there with other international teams. So six teams from Germany and Spain and, um, and the Netherlands would all head down there for some, some competition training with them. We would then go to LA for a month on Hermosa Beach and train with the Americans. We then go back to Brazil and have a warm weather training camp before the tournament starts in Brazil in April. So we did have a lot of training. A lot of travelling. <laughs> so when you were growing up, did the facilities impact your success now? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think when you um, you compare our development and, and the level of sport, or especially in beach volleyball and volleyball, compared to other European countries, um, we are behind because the facilities and the programs they have in place for, for athletes or for students even at a younger age does put them into a full-time training program before we do. Um, I finished school, I went to university, I got my first master's and I got my second master's at the same time. So I think um, you have a lot of athletes at the beginning have to choose whether you go and um, whether you do your sport with your um, academics or whether you just go to sport. I think that's the difference between us and also a lot of the Europeans. They're kind of getting to the end of their career and saying, oh, actually, no, I don't have anything to fall back on. Um, Where if we do, we've been to uni, we've got our degrees, and we have that in the bank to make sure that if there's injuries, if there's a change of lifestyle, or if it's just getting, um, we just want a change of, of, of challenge, then we can actually rely back on, on what we've done. Um, so in terms of independence, the Scottish government have um, said that they will put more in money into sport uh, should Scotland become independent. Do you think that will have a big impact on the number of people playing sport in Scotland? Um, I think it will. I think it's, it's all about the programmes and the facilities that people have available to them and also being able to, to try different things out. I think it's, it's great to introduce, the, the Olympics introduced so many minority sports to, to the general public to, to kind of get more people interested in sport. You've got to offer them more. You can't just say you have to play rugby or hockey or swimming. <laughs> which was the case a couple of years ago when I, when I came to, to Mary Erskine, I set up the beach volleyball team because that was something I was really interested in. And because I'd been exposed to it at an earlier age, I knew that's where I wanted to go and what I, what I wanted to pursue. I think it's very important for, for younger kids to try out as many different sports as they can so they can find one they love. And there's, there's no way you're going to dedicate the time and, and the effort that you need if you don't love what you do. So um, I think it's great. I think more, more funding for sport, more facilities, more programs, um, is definitely going to advance sport in, in, in Scotland. In the Olympics, Scottish 
Scottish athletes in Team GB had a huge success and they brought home almost 20% of the medals that were won. And Alex Evans has said that if Scotland does become independent, uh, we will climb top high at Rio 2016. So how do you think this will affect like, the success of Scottish athletes? Um, I think that coupled with the facilities and the funding, will, it will it'll only bring on support in Scotland. Um, I think Glasgow 2014 is going to be a good indication as to what we can do. But as you said, we, we, we did bring home a lot of medals in the Olympics, um, and a lot of people have commented on that. Um, I think a lot of Scottish athletes actually leave Scotland to go to Antarctica for the programmes and facilities. So it's bringing that side of things up to make sure Scottish athletes can stay in Scotland and, and still perform at that high level, have exposure to that training and, and that environment to be able to compete on the world stage. Um, well, are you planning on going to? Um, I have other plans. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I retired in December. Um, it was a very tough decision for me. Um, sport playing a massive part in my life. Um, but it was a time for a different challenge. I was, uh, had enough finding sand everywhere. <laughs> um, and I, I wanted to, I, as I said earlier, I've been to university, I've got a man's um, and business law masters, I've got a master's in marketing. Um, I spent a lot of time studying, I didn't want to, to get to a point where those, it would be difficult to get into, into that kind of job. So I kind of set myself a new challenge and kind of going in a new direction. <laughs> Did you make a conscious choice when you were younger? Because um, obviously beach volleyball isn't a very common sport in Scotland, especially given the weather. So did you make a conscious choice to switch from volleyball to beach volleyball and why? Um, I was in, when I was in Scotland, I, I represented um, Scotland in indoor volleyball. Um, and when the Olympics were announced, uh, they decided to set up a GB volleyball program and a GB um, beach program. And they, they asked all the volleyball players to try out for both um, disciplines. As soon as, um, I think, the two seasons coincide. So indoor volleyball runs from September to April, and beach season runs from April to September. So during the indoor off season, I started to play beach volleyball a little bit. Um, before they set up the, the beach program or the beach tour in Scotland, I'd been going to England to see some of their events and, and really started to see the different parts of the game and how they really match with my personality and, and, and playing with one other person it was a lot easier to control your performance and, and to really drive forward how the team 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 does. So when we were given that choice to go for an indoor beach, I think that's when I decided that it really was the way forward and I could see myself being more successful, having more ownership over my performance um, than on the beach. And your partner is obviously not Scottish. And she's from um, England. So did that um, ever impact your um, what you were thinking about when you were playing, or things like that? Like decisions, like how to take place. I think um, it, it, this just this year, GB has been um, it's, it's now not recognised in the beach volleyball world tour or in the SIGB. So if we had stayed together, we would have to have made a decision. Uh, the way it works with volleyball um, is you can play for. Scotland, so I play for Scotland. I have to not play for Scotland for two years to play for England, but we just not sure having represented GB for the last six years how that would have affected it. So it would have definitely have, um, have created some controversy as to what we were going to do and who we were going to represent, but um, we did just have to make that decision. <laughs> did you have a lot of media training before you went to the Olympics? Um, yeah, we did. The BOA set up some sessions for us as well, um, but our, um, our agent we had a, an agent who looked for a sponsorship for us and he thought it was very important that we have media training, especially with volleyball uh, attracting the attention it did during the game. It's really important that we're able to get our message across um, because a lot of people wanted to change the message of the message they wanted to tell everyone else rather than what we were saying. So um, we did have a lot of media training in terms of making sure you got your message across, you understood what they were asking and tried to have some solutions to get out sticky questions, which they did try. <laughs> Should try during the Olympics. <laughs> and I imagine it's quite a big shock because the Olympics obviously was a massive event here and possibly brought a lot more attention onto the athletes. And um, has any part of your life changed because of that? Um, no, not really. I think um, I, we just kind of took it in our stride. We understood that when we got to the games, the beach volleyball is one of the most popular events, and, and being a home nation country or a home, home nation representative. Um, we did have a lot more attention on us, but we, we, um, I think it's, it's so important when you're in that situation, especially for minority sport, to get as much about the sport out there as you can, so that you can actually affect 
the ability to, to ride the wave of the Olympics created for beach volleyball. Um, I've got lots of Twitter followers, and it's really cool. <laughs> um, but, and, and occasionally I kind of go places, and I was playing a volleyball match um, in Manchester a couple of weeks ago, and I was walking out, and two little boys. Um, but other than that, no, it's not really changed. Many people have praised the Olympics because it's put forward a new image for women, a, an athletic body and not just sort of thin. Um, what do you think about being a beach, a beach volleyball player? Because obviously you get a lot of comments on your body doing that. We <laughs> do. Um, we, uh, we have a, a lot on show, but it, it really is um, the most suitable outfit for beach volleyball. We have played in temperatures up to 50 degrees. Um, we are sweaty, disgusting, <laughs> and um, there's sand everywhere, so there's, there's nothing else that we'd be happy playing in, but it's so important when you are in that situation to be, to be comfortable with your, with your body, and I think so much about what we do is being strong rather than being skinny. Um, skinny people can't do much. <laughs> it's all about being healthy, it's about making sure you've got a well-maintained balance and a balanced diet, and, and making sure that that you're comfortable with yourself and you try and, and you put yourself forward for what you are rather than worrying about what anyone else thinks or what anyone else thinks you should be. Um, it is definitely an issue for, for younger girls and I think at the Olympics was great last year because they were seeing something different to all the skinny anorexic people in those things, <laughs> which is really scary because I think it is, it's, it's all about being healthy and when you're younger that's really when you have to kind of be healthy and strong to be able to make sure that you're okay later on and, and when you're in school you just think this is it but really it's not there's a whole world out there and you just need to make sure you're healthy and on the top of that you're also um setting up a new fitness team and um, called volleybody and mm -hmm. um, how do you think that will do you think that will have a big impact on what people like will it be the next big craze we're hoping so. Um, I think uh, we were we were approached after games last year um, to to collaborate on a sort of fitness program based on what we've been doing for the last six years. So um, obviously people won't be training three times a day, but all the core exercises that we've been doing to strengthen our legs and our, our arms and, and our core are all part of this program. But um, something that we do say with the program and it's essential is that it's it's paired with a well-balanced diet, and I think that really is the key to anything. Exercise and well-balanced diet is not just going to affect how you look, but it's going to affect how you feel. Um, and obviously we love what we've been doing, and, and if it leads more people to play beach volleyball, then that's amazing. But it is really, it's an exciting new program. It's a bit different from just going into the gym and running, or just going into the gym and, and, and doing what you want and not really knowing. It kind of gives you direction, and it lets you try out some new things. I mean, there's one exercise where you get a big... Um, elastic and you put it over your feet and you're over your shoulders and you jump with it. So it's very, it, it's really, it, it, you, as you guys, you just laugh, but it's it's a good workout and it's fun. So I think it, it will go down really well. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and as an athlete, how do you feel you're treated by other athletes, but also by other members of the public in terms of how they treat other athletes compared to beach volleyball players? I think for us, a, a big challenge going into the games is no one had had any exposure to our sport at a high level. So if we spoke to any any journalist and they just went, oh yeah, you just rock up on the court and you just do what you want and then you go to the bar. And you, <laughs> do you want to come and train with us for a day? That's not what we do. <laughs> um, so I think it, a lot of what we had to do, especially in the lead up to the games, was just try and understand that the reason they were asking those questions was because they didn't understand the sport, they hadn't been exposed to it at a high level, so they didn't really know what what it, what it took, how hard we had to train to be able to move on the sand. Um, and one thing we always used to say is, when you're on holiday, how easy is it is to run on the beach? And they're like, oh, actually, yeah, when you said that, it's really difficult to run on the beach. And I, and I said to them, well, we do that every day, and then we have to jump, and we have to dive all over the place and get back up and jump again. So um, I think beach volleyball did an amazing thing for, for, for the beach volleyball athletes in the UK during the games, because it just showed what high level, how athletic you have to be, how fit you have to be to be able to, to compete against other people in the world. So um, I think we were treated the way that was only, and we, we had to accept it because they hadn't had the exposure to what we do. So um, I think during the games and, and after games, we had a very different, we had different questions. We kind of said, oh, so what do you have to do outside of beach volleyball to be able to do what you have to do on the court? And when we started getting those questions, you went, yes! It's got through um, because they then understood what different things that they had they could ask because they had a lot of legacy. Um, a big part of the 
London 2012 Olympics, do you think that um, more people will be encouraged to play beach volleyball or maybe give different sports a shot because of it? I hope so. I think um, all the minority sports during the Games, they did really have a great following and a lot of people were very excited at that venue. All the sport, um, all the sand, sorry, that was used during the Olympics has now been put in volleyball courts in and around London, which is amazing for London, but not for anywhere else. Um, but I think it will just try and, it'll give people a different idea. So even if someone says, oh, I actually would like to try volleyball, they now have an avenue to, to kind of investigate. They know they're going to the National Federation. They know that there are things and, and tours and, and teams they can play with and train. So I think it was great to kind of expose the country to different sports. A huge thank you to Shauna Mallon for all the time she gave out speaking to us. We wish her all the best for the future.